your success is attributed to Amir Khan. Oh, yeah, it's a definite no. Yeah. I just feel so proud that the film La Pata Ladies is going to the Oscars. And here we have our Kiran Rao representing us. You and Amir obviously are co-parenting Azad. How does that work? It's it's tricky mm. in that he's a very, very busy father. Yeah. Honestly, even when we were married, I was doing a lot of the actual primary parenting. What do you have to say about this whole Me Too thing? If we look for help, we find it. If we look for solidarity yeah. and support, we find it. The story itself was a really lovely realistic story of two girls getting lost. The swap itself is both like full Hindi cinema and Shakespeare. Welcome to What Women Want with Kareena Kapoor Khan, Season 5. Presented by Dabar Gulabri, co-powered by Philips Carmen Streamer and Max Life Insurance. Wo kehte hai na, you have to be lost to find yourself truly. मेरी आज की गेस्ट की कहानी कुछ ऐसी ही है। She's quite often लापता, but she's found herself, and ladies and gentlemen, she has found herself in India's official entry to the Oscar nominations in the Best International Feature Film category. An ace director, producer, and a dear friend, please welcome हमारी not so लापता किरण राव। Welcome to the show. What women want. No better guest to than you to have you on this couch and chat about what women want. Thank you. So nice to be here. I know. So exciting. But first, I have to know what was the reaction. Now, I mean, everyone's going to ask. When I got to know, I it was complete disbelief. Honestly, in the beginning, I was like, not possible. What nonsense! I was genuinely, obviously, in my heart of hearts, really hoping. And you know, every filmmaker wants to be India's entry to the Oscar. Right. But when it actually happened, it took me a minute for it to actually feel like the real truth. And then when I when I finally kind of accepted it, we were elated. So I think the story, I mean, there was, it was a multi-star. There were, you know, so many different characters in the film. But everyone, sabki ek ek alag kahani thi. Mm. So how did you, you know, get into it? How did you write the story? What was the first germ that came in? How did it happen? La Pata Ladies. This so the, it actually began with a, a script that a guy called Biplab Goswami wrote called Two Brides. Okay. And actually the story itself was a really... Lovely, realistic story of two girls getting lost. One very sheltered, one who has dreams. But uh, it, it, it. I felt in genre needed to be much more funny. Had to have humor, satire yeah, to make it that. Yeah, it's kind of entertaining also. Yeah, it actually the the swap itself is both like you know. Full Hindi cinema and Shakespeare, yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. mistaken identities, mm. you know, swap kind of thing. So I felt ripe with potential to make into a comedy, mm. and so we but brought it was on emotional as well. Yeah, so ground. we did have to work on that. The original story was a little bit more like sort of realistic art house cinema, mm. and uh, so we brought on this wonderful writer called Sneha Desai. Okay. She's an absolute cracker of a writer. She came on and transformed it. Okay. And we developed these characters. Jaya was very different in the original. There was no Manju Mai in the original. Mm -hmm. Also, one thing about the script is that I just feel like, you know, it had a very different kind of an individuality, each character. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. You know, what I felt was that like, one is, it gave us the opportunity to explore women's lives yeah. in very different ways. And you, you know, sat with the actors yeah, as well. sat with the actors, sat with the writers. Mm. Because when I read the original, you had this pool character, mm. but her arc was not not as well defined, where she very subtly finds her, you know, uh, some yeah. sort of like a, uh, an identity for herself within this marriage that she's happy to be in. And Jaya was like completely different in the original and we wanted this character of a person who's ambitious, who's bright and dreams are dashed, she finds this opportunity and decides that, you know, why should I lose this opportunity? So those characters, though, of course, we had to develop, but there's so many others and mm. so one of the main characters that I was keen to bring in was a character like Manju Mai, yeah. who you know yeah. you feel like you want one woman in this film who can prove that women can do things on their own, can live by their own rules, can look after themselves, be economically independent. You know, yeah. And also, 
I just feel so proud that I mean most most people feel like you know uh, Indian cinema has all you know the big mm -hmm. super duper stars and their films are going to you know be blockbusters and you know go on to make it to a global platform and here we have our Kiran Rao representing us yeah and a, a a woman I do I, I don't think I can feel prouder oh. or is better you know what I mean I feel immensely proud and immensely honored actually Karina because you know we are a country of so many, so many films so one to be chosen amongst like 29 films that were in contention and, yeah. and also to be representing women yeah. in general we really I feel our it, you know our time came a long time ago and I'm really happy to be there and uh, you know sort of flying our flag in many ways it's really very exciting very very exciting I feel like this is a film also that leaves you with a nice, nice. sense of India also Absolutely. you know it's a it's, it's not showing him ke uh, aise yeah, you looking at it we have our time. problems yeah. Who doesn't, yeah, you know? And yeah. but we're ready to face them. We're ready to look beyond them, look at solutions. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. There, I feel like there's a sense of solidarity that this film has engendered when with anyone who's watched it. Like yeah. anyone who's watched it comes up to me with such a such sense of like optimism, warmth, yeah. empathy. Like I really feel like our yeah, films give you that feeling in the end. You know? Yeah, it's that's what so I'm hoping everything. will translate because I I do think that you know for all the issues that we deal with, there is the flip side. And if we look for help, we find it. If we look for solidarity yeah. and support, we find it. Uh, especially women because we are constantly you know boxed within certain yeah, you know restrictions yeah. like expectations, guilt of various kinds, mm, mm. you know, something that just makes you feel good about yourself or gives you the strength to... And this you know? film, I think, somewhere gave women the strength, no? Mm. That it gives you that feeling. Yeah, it's amazing the kinds of responses I've had. And from people, <coughs> who, women from very different parts mm. of society. It's not just that only multiplex watchers have mm. loved it, you know? Yeah. Which is so nice. Yeah. I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> Kiran, of course, there's an Oscar ki entry ka glow hai. <laughs> So now our next segment is called Dabar Gulabri Glow and Low segment. So basically, you have two placards, glow and low. So okay. we give you situations and you just have to say whether it was a glow moment or a low moment. Okay. First one is when you get the perfect cast for a film. Of course. But of course. Even though it takes mehnat of four mehnat, months. Mehnat, but it's actually the most fun part also. So <laughs> Definite glow. When celebrities get trolled for their personal life choices like surrogacy or adoption or divorce. Passing. Yeah. No, shouldn't. Why? Like, I mean, you know, one is celebrities have their private lives and should be entitled to their privacy. But apart from that, it's great actually to be able to discuss these things because you're a celebrity. And mm. then to get trolled for things like that is low. Is low. Great. When a stranger compliments your work with a note. Mm. Which I'm sure you've got now many I have. for I have. It's always nice. It's so lovely. I keep getting a lot of these beautiful notes on airlines. They give me like a cute little note and one cookie packet and it's damn cute. <laughs> Love it's it. So sweet. Very so I nice. think it just makes you feel like happy that your work is being appreciated. Special. Everyone loves it. They're watching it. I think that's what I... Don't we all work for a little... You know that. Exactly. You work to be able to touch people and see that smile on their faces when they see you. It feels so special. I know now what stars feel like. Yeah, because <laughs> you're a star. You get to direct a horror hmm. or an action film. <gasps> which one would you want to do? Oh, which would I want to do? I thought Glow Low. No, Glow Low first also. Uh -huh. I, I think glow. You, glow, you want glow. to, no? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I horror? think horror more than... Hmm. Act I mean, action also, but action plus horror would be even nicer. Hmm. Like lots of exciting things happening together. It's just a genre that actually I don't know so well, so it interests me even more. I'm like, the very, horror genre. yeah, I'm very interested interested in it yeah. and I feel like it can be so metaphorical like mm -hmm. nice like sort of allusions to things mm -hmm. through these you know mysterious things so happening. Maybe now you can write a horror film. Maybe. <laughs> maybe I already am. <laughs> Your success is attributed to Amir Khan. Oh. <laughs> Definite low. Definite low. Yeah. Why? Why should they do that? It's my script, my manager. You work so hard, right? Yeah. You know, the thing is, I, I, I kind of feel it's natural because he, he's, he's been known force. for someone someone who does such quality work. Absolutely. So you attribute, and uh, I do 
personally I attribute a lot of my success in life to having a very supportive and a very bright partner who intellectually matches me, who supports yeah, yeah. everything I do. So definitely, personally I can say that he has yeah. a lot of hand in my life, which is great. But uh, for other people to sort of attribute my anything that I do to him yeah. is uh, always and I think a lot of women are accustomed to having that yeah, happen course, to them. Yeah, they you know have like such a big force behind them but I mean you've broken the mold and you've like proved yourself mm. time and again with you know your film so I think that yeah it's a definite low. Yeah. It's awful. You get a chance to act in a movie. Uh, Would you act? God. <laughs> okay, so next we're going to see Kiran in like, I don't know, acting. Uh, you know, I used so to act a lot in school. Really? And school and college, I was like always acting. In fact, uh, theatre groups in, uh, you know, like doing, going to the Xavier's theatre, you know, uh, Malhar me the theatre yeah, competition, yeah. I would represent my college, things like that. So I used to enjoy it, but back when I was in college, it was something I did for mm -hmm. fun. The fact is that I like to act, but I don't know whether acting in a role would be as exciting for me because as a director, mm -hmm. I get to act all the parts. When I'm directing, Achha, you I act, act all, for you know all. all of them. Like I'll tell them exactly how I want it. Oh so it's so much God. fun. I get to be Manju Mai, I get to be Chotu, I get to be, you know. So it's, I think we're so used to seeing you behind the scenes yeah. that I've never really thought about like, okay, fine. Yeah, you can, I, you'll ask my actors. This is, it's a, it's great for me because mm. it's, I'm able to tell them what I'm going for. Mm. Like, obviously, they'll do it in their own way. But you but perform. I'm, but I perform for them. I perform. And I actually, mm. uh, though not film, but I think I'd love to do a play. Oh, like wow, theater, that's even yeah. Tougher, yeah. No, no, it's much more fun. I mean, it's immediate. It's like your that energy, you, that two and a half, three hours of a play. It's like being on some kind of high. It's. I would do it someday. Wow, mm. <laughs> I, mean, I, I didn't know this about you. So great, you did really well in this. Okay, thank you. Round full so, marks. Yes, full marks. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. But obviously, I need to ask you this: that you know, you and Amir obviously are co-parenting Azad, mm. and. I think that is, I mean, it has its own, you know, difficulties in its way. So mm. how, how, how does that work? Mm. It's, it's tricky mm. in that he's a very, very busy father. Yeah. And uh, honestly, even when we were married, I was doing a lot of the actual primary parenting. Mm. And, uh, you know, once we got separated and then divorced, I think Amir also sort of realized how much of that he would be able have to factor into his life you know yeah. because when you were living together in one house somehow, ho just, hai somehow. Yeah, yeah. but in order to kind of make time for Azad it came as a much more conscious decision more recently so I think now it's become much smoother and mm. Amir is much more conscious. involved in that uh, sense and conscious and we have that sort of luckily right now we are upstairs and downstairs yeah, yeah. but wherever we live we won't be far away and Azad is actually now, because he's older, mm. enjoying his time with his dad a lot more. Yeah. So it's, I think, reached a place where it's really nice, you know, and nice. I can I can feel like I can relax and leave Azad with Amir and mm. uh, only and like, Amir oh, knows oh, nothing about school. Yeah. This is this is one of those. <laughs> yeah, he'll be like, huh? Is they jate? It's, I think, a, it's a majority of a dad's problem. Yeah, they're like, just clueless. They're like, like school ka mat bolna. I'll uh, do whatever else. I'll take them on holidays. I'll do other things. Yeah. Amazing. But I think Amir has been one person who's always, like you just mentioned, mm -hmm. supported you professionally and personally. So I need to ask you, what is the one thing about Amir mm -hmm. that you love, hate and just about tolerate? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um... What I love about Amir is, uh, in some ways, his once he likes something, he is entirely behind it. He's like a hundred percent guy. You know, mm -hmm. if he's doesn't like it, he's really honest. But if he likes something, he will really do his best for it. Which I I'm talking professionally because you asked me yeah, this yeah. question is in a professional context. I feel like that support that he gives you mm -hmm. as a producer I don't think anybody can give you he's like literally yeah. one of the best people you can ever work with for as a creative person so love is that uh, hate is his uh, lack of like he takes his time mm. and with everything he needs things to arrive at a place when he can take his decision mm -hmm. in the right way and that can be really <laughs> 
frustrating because he has 20 things obviously that he's doing. Yeah, that he's doing. And you will factor in the top three or four, but time, like time, you're, you're yeah. waiting on his time is the thing I really Yeah, you're like, what like. are you doing? What are you thinking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he takes his time in things. Yeah. Even personally also, I think that it yeah. takes him time to it kind takes of... Him. Yeah. Barely tolerate, I would like to say... Uh, Hmm, what do I barely tolerate? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that there's a list. You can. You can say like one, two, three. Uh, well, um, uh, he can uh, go off and lecture. Like he'll <laughs> give certain huh. lumber lectures about things yeah. sometimes. Yeah. And yeah, those like, I don't like much. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Like why are you saying this to me? Yeah. I mean, it's not quite mansplaining, but coming yeah. close. So that. <laughs> yeah. So, the entire experience of being a single parent, like, how does it work? What do you feel? One good thing, one bad thing about it, maybe. You know, I have had Touchwood really only good days. Okay. In the sense that Azad, I feel, is a really good kid. Mm -hmm. And because we've, it's been just him and me in some yeah, ways, like, yeah. because I'm a single mom, for so long, we know each other quite well. The great thing about being a single mom is this connection that you can build with your kid. And really, we, we are each other's you know, in some way support system. He mm. really, when I'm low, there's nothing more I want than to just hang out with him. And I can tell him also, listen, oh. I'm really feeling down. So he will, you know, and he'll go he's very empathetic. And he's a really good kid, touch wood like that. He's really a supportive kid. He's and great and he's got a really wicked sense of humor. He yeah. makes me laugh like crazy. So there are no bad days as in like you don't find it mm. difficult or... I mean, I think I the mean, bad course, days are not... Also. Yeah, the single mom thing is the bad days are usually when you really want a break for yourself and your co-parent cannot for instance because of his own yeah, schedule course, do something so luckily I have my parents who will step in and are really supportive and they come and help but those are the days when you you know miss the fact that I can't just at no point can you actually switch completely off switch like, off yeah, no. I've realized mums just can never completely switch off until they and they tend not to all the kids life which is not a good thing you're a director you have to constantly be in that yeah and then you really of course we all as you know being a mum yourself we have kids who also adapt to it and then yeah. begin to support you in that well, of course you know, they're if very you, resilient and honestly it's great for them to have mums who you know demand the time for themselves so they realize that okay this yeah, is yeah. they're not just uh, here to look after me but they're their own person they have their own lives and I and think it's nice better to have that, that they understand that the earlier the better exactly. for everyone around exactly it's more healthy yeah i think re how we raise our boys is critical because i think that's one of the ways yeah absolutely the world will be nicer to women you know, because mm -hmm. of how women raise yeah, their and once sons. They see work, I feel they see working mothers mm. and when they see their mothers go off to work and how hard we, you mm. know, work as well as, you know, the, our male counterparts. Mm. I think they tend to respect that so much more. Yeah. So I it think starts at home. It, it does absolutely we... start at home. They say, you know, children do as you do, not do as you say. Yeah, yeah. If you allow people to disrespect you and they see that time and again, mm. it's a kind of bad, the kind of behavior they'll also yeah, emulate. Yeah. But seeing strong women in their lives and seeing, you know, like you said, working women or women with just some sense of uh, boundaries, self-respect, self-care, I think they also grow up like, you know, respecting women. What do you have to say about this whole Me Too thing which has happened in the Malayalam film industry and how are we taking steps to make sure that, you know, all of us in Bollywood and the, uh, us mm. actresses, directors, I mean, today we have assistant directors, female, art mm. department, everywhere. For starters, I want to express full solidarity with women uh, in Cinema Collective. They, what they did was landmark. They've really, you know, fought the long and hard fight for all of us. For everybody, yeah. And the HEMA committee report proves that we have a long way to go mm. in terms of making working conditions on a film set safe. And I think as an industry, we need to first accept that there are big gaps and we need to close those gaps yeah. when it comes to safety, it comes to just gender equity and parity and happy working conditions. Um, and then we can make 
you know, sort of guidelines, provisions, mm. uh, which I feel are very essential because we keep talking about how we don't have enough women, women voices, women directors, women producers, women in positions of power, right. decision making uh, positions. And we can't do that unless we make this a welcoming space for mm. women, you mm. know, and women want to be in the industry. It's about time that we all, you know, kind have of talked about it. Have certain guidelines also. Have certain guidelines I mean, and producers. I think also beyond guidelines, I think as producers, as people who have in some way, uh, you know, some amount of control over our filmmaking processes, we must take steps ourselves yeah. to make sure we have more women. Firstly, just include more women in your crew at every level. Make it a 50% crew. Yeah. You know, this is something that I have decided to do going forward is that Amazing. in actual hard numbers, we should follow through. Yeah, see You know, why is it, oh, there's a sprinkling of women on your set. Mm. But if you actually go down the, you know, your long credits, mm. they're 10%, less than 10% of your crew often. So why not raise that to 50% consciously? And secondly, create your uh, ICCs, your internal uh, complaints committees. Yes. Make sure you have those committees. They are well Every known to your production crew. production house should, I think. Everyone. It's mandated mm. and it should be done. Mm. And make it like, uh, like walk the talk as a producer, as a, you know, studio head, whatever it is, to say that, look, we will ensure that at least on our part, we do the right thing. The, uh, with the guild, we had taken those steps, mm -hmm. created, you know, had workshops with uh, producers, uh, you know, told, basically talked about the guidelines that had been put in place. And I think that it's... It's up to us to do it also. Yeah, it is. To and lead it and do it. Like, you know, if you have a voice and like you're speaking about it now yeah. openly and that's why this question was imperative for me to ask so that, you know, people get to at least hear that yeah. more women can come and, yeah. you know, join, you know, your production house or, you know, different places. We need more of that. We absolutely for, do. We do. So now we're at the finale of our show. It's very quick and you know, short and sweet, so amazing talking to you. So it's a segment which is AMA where you get to ask me anything before you go. Ah, okay. Just one question. <laughs> Just one question. Uh, oh, tough. Yeah, can I be like, oh, what, yeah, what, what do, do I ask, ask you? <laughs> if you had the option, mm -hmm. I mean, of just doing anything, anything <laughs> in the world that you could do without not acting not acting yeah what would that be like you just suppose you didn't if you wanted to give up acting and just do anything else in the in life i don't know i think i would definitely be like a like a travel blogger oh, yeah? somebody yeah like who would just be like writing all day about like travel different cities because I love traveling I love going to different places I would be writing about like you know different cities about their food about their wine you know just oh, yeah? enjoying that part of life Achha? yeah I think that would be nice <laughs> that would be fab because I like traveling you like traveling yeah. but you'd have to be a vlogger also yeah. which is Kind of like acting, huh, by the way. Is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> we can just blog you without that ah, face. Huh? Okay. <laughs> just do that. But thank you so much, uh, Kiran, for coming. Huh. And um, Oscar speech ke liye ready ho jao. <laughs> what else can I say? I wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Yay. Yay. We wanted to meet you. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Yay. Thank you, Kiran. Yay. Bring it on, let's go guys! <laughs> the bald man! <laughs> and to my lovely audiences, I hope you enjoyed watching this episode. Stay tuned to Mirchi Plus for more such episodes and subscribe to Ghana to hear our show in the podcast section. Till then, I'm Karina Kapoor Khan signing off. See you all in the next episode of What Women Want with Karina Kapoor Khan, Season 5. Mm -hmm.